Wow, do you like our, our flashy new intro, Stevie? It's amazing. You know, I've not seen it. Don't have a clue what it looks like, but I'm sure it's brilliant. I was going to say you, you've not seen it, but also I've not even made it yet. Um, it's a, a post-edit job here. I hope everyone watching it at home enjoys um, Celtic Game. Finally getting a wee intro to, to play about with. Um, Stevie, you've, you've rejoined us back in the channel after a week off. Ryan118 was in for you last week, so it's fair to say we've taken a, a step down this week. Um, how are you? I would uh, no comment on Ryan one one eight and his reputation, Hamish. But uh, I'm getting better. I was feeling crap last week, as you know. And Still we'll move not. on. Um, got plenty of Celtic stories to to cover. <laughs> That's horrible because Stevie genuinely wasn't uh, very well last week. So I, I'm glad to to hear that you're you're fighting fit and uh, and back here. But we do have plenty to to cover today. Um, lots of news stories. I woke up to this morning. The the main one being. Um, that Brendan Rodgers has been served with a, a notice of complaint by the SFA, that organisation we all love, following his comments at Tynecastle. The word incompetence uh, seems to be the, the issue here, as I, I did predict in a, a video earlier this week. Um, it's understood that Celtic will defend uh, the manager to the hilt, and the, the hearing date of Thursday, March the 28th, has been set by, wait for this, Stevie, for tabloid patter. The Hamden Blazers. <laughs> I was wait- I love it. I was waiting on the top beaks myself. <laughs> I just we, we just love that kind of tabloid chat you get. Um, Thursday, March the twenty eighth, Stevie seems a wee while away. It also seems maybe just a wee bit before a big game we've got, a huge game we've got this season. Um Rogers could get a two match ban if he's found guilty, would be missing Livingston away. A ground we've never had any issues at, um, and Rangers away as mm. well. Um, the only interaction he could have with the, the team would be 15 minutes before the game and 15 minutes after the game. Um, Celtic understood to be defending the manager to the hilt, as I say, and if he does miss Ibrox, I would say that kind of sums up a season of key people missing key things and things going wrong. What's your, what's your take on this? I mean... He was quite critical. Can Rogers have any complaints? I guess he was. He wasn't lying either, wasn't he? When he said it was an incompetent performance. No, but you knew it was coming as well. We all did. As soon as he said it, as soon as he name checked uh, a guy who shall not be named, because we don't want any repercussions either, Hamish. No, but as soon as he mentioned his name, you knew it was coming. Um, I knew that we did. I think I texted Rizzo and said he's going to get hammered for that and. It's, here's my big thing about it. I'm absolutely sick to death talking about the, the refs and all that and getting on about it. And remember last season when VAR came in, me and you did many videos about it. By the end, we were just exhausted talking about it. I, it genuinely is Disney interest me. It's so boring, right? But here's my big thing with it. It's it's the culture in Scottish football that's the worst of it, Hamish, because like, the referees, as I said to you after the 4-3 game against Hearts when VAR made its terrible introduction, you know, it's a part-time gig for them. So I believe they get between 800 to to £1,000. Now, they still get day jobs as well. So, like, and they don't answer to anyone. It's shrouded in secrecy. And there's, like, they, they can't even come out and do an interview and go, listen, you know, here's here's why I made this decision. Here's why I did this. And they're just protected by the top beaks, you know, to use that tabloid part again. It's like me, right? Day job I've got, Hamish. Now it's like me every week, no matter what, getting a shift and a cafe, right? Two hundred and fifty quid a pop, but I'm constantly burning food. The manager, no matter what, is just defending me, going, ah, "Well, it's not his fault." Keep customers and all that complaining, but I'm just constantly going, "What can I do about it?" You know, what I mean, it's like that type of thing. It's just it, it. Whereas if you make these refs professional, give them the adequate training and all that, you know, then it's that if they've if they're making mistakes week to week on a Saturday, they will have to come out and defend it for the sake of their careers because, you know, that's going to be a livelihood to them. That's where I think the, the, the there's a massive problem in Scottish football and everything with us, Hamish, and, you know, this is why people get frustrated with us. This is why Brendan's came out um, yeah, criticising them. And despite, you know, you've got the rest of Scottish football, no doubt, slagging off Celtic when their teams have been hammered by VR and hammered by refs in the past for some ludicrous decisions. It's just going to come back to just laughing at Celtic and saying, oh, you're playing the victim and all that, when the reality is every team has been done by these refs in the past with ridiculous calls. And 
going to the grand scheme of it, it just wasn't a penalty on Sunday. That's the reality of it. And I dare say the one we got as well. I think I watched your video and I know you did say that you, th- you felt it was, but I haven't watched it back. I just didn't think it ever was. But yeah, Brendan it was always going to get hammered as soon as he used his name, as soon as he was that scathing. Shouldn't be, because he should be able to come out and criticise it because it was a terrible um, decision. Two terrible decisions, you could say. But due to the whole secrecy of Scottish football and the fact that there's never accountability or responsibility taking Hamish, yeah. you're never going to see a change. You're never going to see anything like that. You're never going to see referees come out and go, ah, here's why I did this. Um, you're never going to see the the header F has only came out once um, and it was like the most marginal call ever. You remember against Hearts as well uh, at Celtic Park when Robbie Nielsen came out and nearly greeting. So, you know, if that's it, like, fair enough if he's going to come out, right, and, and, and talk about decisions, but he's only been seen once after that. Never again. And this is why, you know, it's this is why managers, like, I guess, why Brendan Rodgers and fans and everything, everybody, you know, like the falls for Scottish football, falls, teams, sorry, in Scotland, get wound up and that frustrated. So I can understand it. But yeah, I always knew that was coming um, with Brendan, sadly. Yeah, for, I mean, for me, the the main issue I, I think a lot of fans would have is just the lack of consistency. And I think the the hope was that when VAR came in, I was very very naive, looking back at, at you know VAR, and I, I had the feeling that it would hopefully take away that lack of consistency because they'd be looking at it in in a studio, and things wouldn't be missed. But it's just the fact that like certain decisions, certain high boots are red cards. Yet yeah, the week before. They aren't, and certain handballs that don't look like handballs, like the weekend, are are penalties. But then, you know, the week before, when a Motherwell player has a far more obvious handball, VAR doesn't even like seemingly have a proper check. And it just, I just feel like it's we've got the cheap version um, of VAR, and it's it's quite frustrating. And to be honest, I can see. I mean, there's no doubt Rogers you know, is trying to foster this kind of siege mentality. And I know people are talking about it, but it was clear after the game that's what he's trying to do because he wasn't critical of the players at all on Sunday. And I, listen, I don't think the players played well enough, um, you know, to, to get something from that match. I think our performance was lacking, you know, as well as the officials' performance. But Rogers is clearly, um, you know, batting for the players at the moment and he's clearly trying to create that, you know, everyone against this type thing. And Celtic are, you know, backing Rogers to the hilt, which, which I think is great. The bottom line is, though, um, if Rogers misses Ibrox, like that's that's bad news for us. I think it doesn't make getting a result impossible. I remember us beating Rangers a number of years ago with, with Neil Lennon spending some much loved time in the, the stand at that final ever Old Firm game before before their liquidation was um, was Lennon in the stand, wasn't it? Because he had that that famous uh, guy who became a meme uh, in front of him who people thought was Craig White. Remember that? Great times. I had to, actually. And remember he had that mad earpiece on. He was like a bouncer as well. <laughs> that day. Uh, so, yeah, I, I get it. It's no ideal, obviously. And I'm sure Brendan himself would feel, you know, Celtic are, are, would be um, far more advantageous to have him in the dugout. Um, and also, he's, he's a big enough character. He lives for these games. We know that. We've already seen twice this season, you know. But it's, it's could no also give us a boost. Could could in a weird way, if, if he does spend time in the stand, could also give the team a, a again add to that siege mentality. Yeah, aye, there's that too. And you know, the players would definitely be rallying behind them and everything. And I think the big thing for me is when I saw the, the date of it as well. I'm I'm not again. I, I said how I'm so bored of hearing about refs, SFA and everything. I think you are too. You genuinely just want to talk about football, right? It's no us that came on here wanting to talk about VR and refs and that. It, it honestly bores me to tears, mate. But it's just the fact that it's, you know, on the 28th of March, there's this hearing and you're like, for players, yeah. um, you can get it all fast track. I think Yang's hearing was uh, yeah, Tuesday. You managed to do that in about two days, yeah. But yet for managers, you know, for Brendan's one, I, I guess no doubt they'll be wanting to, you know, get an appeal, so, or not appeal, so they want to get present their case and they want to hammer them and everything and all that. But surely it doesn't take up to 28 days for that. You said a couple of lines, you can just get the audio from it and then discuss it next week. It's, again, it's just, uh, as, as I was saying, it's the, 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 the overcomplicate, just wee basic things like that, Hamish, and... 
it just adds to the overall sort of fatigue with this entire situation. So I, uh, but the worst part of it is we'd ra- you'd rather just get to the point and just get it over and done with either this week or next. But we're going to have to now hear about it. They're going to be going to some blogs about it. There's going to be that hanging over us now for the next yeah. few weeks. And the papers aren't going to shut up about it. And you're like, thank God for football on Sunday, I guess. Yeah, um, whether we're seeing that on Sunday or not, we'll have to wait and see. Um, to be honest, like, it kind of seems a bit of a, an open and shut case with regards to Rodgers. I mean, we read out the rule on, um, you know, earlier in the week that it is on screen and, you know, it t- takes um, the SFA take exception with anything, um, you know, criticising the, the competence of the their referees, um, bias as well as the thing. I don't think Rodgers insinuated bias but he, he certainly you know used the, the word incompetence and incompetent on on a few occasions so I, I would say that you know he is probably staring down the, the barrel at a ban but as you say we'll, we'll park it for a, a few weeks or, or maybe not um, and, and see what happens moving on um bit of an interesting one Alexandro Bernabe set to join Brazilian side SC Internacional on a loan deal until the end of the season, uh, according to reports in South America. Uh, they're quite a well-known club, I think. Brazilian top-flight club, they'd reportedly have an option to sign Bernabe permanently at the end of the deal. Um, I'm not I'm not properly read into this. I'm not sure if this would be a, an immediate deal. I'm not even sure if the window is open at the moment in, in Brazil or if this would be at the end of our season. Seems a wee bit strange, maybe, that we'd let him go right now and we're not exactly stopped for, for left-backs. But, you know, I've been the first one to say that I, I don't think Bernabe's good enough for Celtic. I think he's proven that over the, the past couple of seasons. He's too erratic, um, you know, to, to be a, a defender for Celtic. You never know what you're going to get from him. Um, and I, I can't say I'm too kind of sad to see him move on. I mean, this is maybe a bit of a brutal question, everyone, but I'll ask Stevie anyway. Uh, is he the worst signing of the lot over the, the past couple of seasons? No, I think uh, Kobayashi has been the, the worst signing in the past couple of seasons, at least. Bernabe, it's chronic, Bernabe isn't it? Ex- expectations over higher than... I didn't have any oh. expectations for him. I just thought he was really? just going to be a, I thought he was just going to be a hothead left back. I remember just seeing him, a wee scrawny guy, and thinking... Nah, no, he's not. You weren't there. excited when the, the signing was announced because no. I thought he was. I thought he was going to transform the team. Nah, I didn't back. know. Any, I didn't know anything about him. So I just saw yeah. for what I saw the optics. I just thought a wee scrawny guy coming into Scottish football. It's, I don't know if that's going to work. So that, that's and I was and have I been proven right? The answer is yes. However, the reason that I say he's not the worst is because um, despite the fact that he has been murder. Provided a fantastic ball in for Gigi against uh, St. Johnston at Perth. Had a really good game against Hibs when we won 6-1 a week later. Um, so there was flashes there. There was some nice moments that I think even pre-season against the uh, Athletic Club sc- uh, scored a great goal too. Again, that's how that, we're scraping the barrel here talking about friendlies, right? But there's certainly more uh, lows than highs with Burnaby. I never once had any inkling thinking I never had high expectations at all I really didn't and yeah despite that I'd say Kobayashi was definitely the worst signing um, out of everyone certainly Kobayashi's had had no highlights at all it's just been I would say a, a reel of total failure for him whereas you look at Burnaby and there's been some moments but I think the worst part was probably um there was a you know how that spell of games we had Aberdeen Hibs and um St Mirren I remember looking in forums and people genuinely were saying, oh, there's a player in there. He was, he was yeah. decent. And oh, and that's how low the bar was and the, the, the standards for the fan base. But I'm like, really? Burnaby is at the point where you're saying there's a player there after quite seen for like a season and a half now. He's just not got it. So I think um, his discipline was just a riot. Positionally, a shambles too. And... I don't think there's going to be anyone watching it. There's going to be, you know, say we're sad to, to see him go because we're certainly not just be kidding ourselves. At the same time, it's mad that he's away and there's no cover. But it says a lot, doesn't it, that the manager thinks Ralston at left back's a better option than you. Yeah, I mean, uh, people can can let us know in the the comments. I'm sure who who they think the um, the worst Celtic signing of of the last couple of seasons has been. That's a nice cheery uh, thought for you. There's pr- plenty of contenders. Burnaby. Unless I'm missing anyone obvious, I think Burnaby would 
would be up there. Maybe James McCarthy, but that's kind of going back a, a, a few years. Um, Bernabe would... Would they count Nat Phillips? Yeah, potentially. I just think when, when you look at the money we spent, like it was several million we spent on Bernabe. Um, he came in with like decent pedigree. It was a left-back position. I think after that first season under Ange, people felt... You know, if we can get like a proper left back with pace and and you know real attacking sense, his Taylor was good, but there was always a feeling that he was kind of limited in terms of like his raw attributes. And Bernabe could come in and really you know transform that team. Um, I was extremely excited about the signing. You know, you kind of have to be excited about a an Argentinian coming in. There's something glamorous. We don't sign them every day coming in straight from South America. There was a feeling you know we we could be onto something here. Um, because our, our general signings were good at that stage, but it just never really, it never really worked for him. I remember in his early days, he, he would play and he would like do the, do the tough things quite well. Like he'd shake off a player and run away, but then he'd have like a simple five, ten yard pass and he'd just give it away to the opposition. And I remember seeing that in pre-season and thinking, all right, there is a player there. He maybe just needs to calm down a little bit, bit of coaching, and, and he will turn into you know a pretty good left back for us. But it just never happened. And then he really struggled in pressurised environments. I remember he came on at, at Hearts in that 4-3 game, I think it was. Shambles. And he was really, really, really poor that day. We watched that game together. And I remember the derby at Ibrox at... Um, New Year, the two all one when Postacoglu would rather put on Josip Juranovic at left back than bring Bernabe on. And I asked Ange, you know, about that a couple of weeks later, and he got a bit defensive. He said, you know, it wasn't really a case of me not trusting Bernabe. I think it certainly was. Um, and then, you know, obviously the, the second derby, Ibrox of the season, that that three 0 game that we've all kind of just forgotten about. But Bernabe and Kobayashi, you know, really struggled. So that was kind of the end for him, I would say. And then. Yeah, this season he's had opportunities. And you're right, he looked he looked he looks he looked better against, you know, St. Mirren <clears throat> especially. Um it's the first time I've seen him take a, a player on and he actually looked decent, but still far too erratic on the ball and you never know what you're gonna get from him. So you look at a signing like that and you really do wonder what the scouting team saw in him. Um but you can do that with a number of our signings. So I just think it's been for me probably the worst given the the expectations I had that he, I felt that he could, you know, be a, a top left back and kind of take the team to the next level, um, alongside you know Juranovic or or Alistair Johnson on the other side, but it hasn't worked, um, and we'll, we'll see where his career goes from here. Um, it's a decent move for him, I think. International, as I say, are a, a big club, so we'll see how he he gets on there. Um, anything else on on Bern? We don't know if that one will go through and when it will go through etc it's just a report at the moment don't wish him any ill will I mean it's one of the ones though that I think even if he does well and impresses he ain't coming back to Celtic I think his time in Glasgow is well and truly over I would say Hamish OK, uh, same goes for Liel Abada. Again, this deal is still to be confirmed at the time of us recording, but it could go through any minute. Um, we'll not spend ages on this, but what's your thoughts on the club getting, what, £8 million pounds for Abada potentially rising to about eleven? Aye, good for the club just to hold as well. I'm sure they'll, um, they'll definitely not invest that money. So really happy for everyone at Celtic to share that wealth um, at the top and definitely not see it reinvested in the squad next season. No, not at all. Right move. Uh, turned into a bit of a pantomime, a bit of a distraction. Needless one. Uh, we have to have a team that are focused on winning the league, focused on you know week to week getting through battles in that league. It's never going to happen. The, the Abada stuff on the papers here uh, and all these series that you were seeing. Um, on social media just wasn't helping anyone best thing the club can do is move on and same for the player himself that's a positive I would say is that Rogers dealt with it quickly like after that Hibs game I think everyone watched that Hibs game and the performance Abada put in and we all realised that wasn't a situation that could continue because that, that was an, an awful performance it was a player in my opinion not giving his all for, for Celtic and, and Rogers clearly from that point you know that registered with him and he realised, you know, this can't continue and he dealt with it. Abada hasn't been seen since. He's been moved on. He's not been kind of kept until the end of the season. He's been moved on and we've, we've got a fee for him once that's announced. So, um, 
yeah, produce some big moments for us. Um, but yeah, I, w- I want players who want to play for us at the moment. Um, Mikey Johnson. I'm just going to check my phone actually because we are recording this uh, during QPR versus West Brom. It's got about 10 minutes to go and it's 2 1 to West Brom. You may have seen this. Mikey Johnson has scored a, another belter for West Brom. Now, I'm not going to raise the point of whether he could come back to, to Celtic and do it. I know you've got a, a comment on that, Stevie, but Mikey Johnson, I think, has scored three or maybe even four goals for West Brom. They've all been absolute belters. They've all been very similar, cutting in from the left and, and firing you know, great shots into the roof of the net. Um, my point here is that I think we could get a decent chunk of money from Mikey Johnson in the summer if he, if he keeps this up. There's a real clamour, I think, among the West Brom fans already to, to see him signed permanently. I saw a lot of stuff on on X, that great app, saying, you know, how is how has he not made it at Celtic when he's this good? And West Brom are in the playoff places, I think, at the moment in the Championship. If they get promoted to the Premier League, um, you know, we could get a, a decent, tidy wee sum for, for Mikey Johnson. Let him cook, as they say, Hamish. Let him cook. No, um, it's like I said, I think it's a mentality thing. I said to you when a couple of weeks ago, no any mm-hmm. doubt about his talent. I think he's a fantastic player. And, you know, Brendan says he's one of the most skillful players at the club. I don't doubt that, but it's just about doing it week in, week out at Celtic, and I just don't think he can. He can do it at a team where you only need to do it maybe one in every three. He he's Brom. doing it every game at the moment. I agree with you, but he is doing it every game. Like, he's, he's doing well. Look, you know what I mean? It's like one of the ones where I think he's been here, he's also been at Celtic far too long, and I know when he was in Portugal, he actually seemed like he was enjoying himself and enjoying his football and then he comes back to Glasgow and he seemed miserable again and he was hating it and I'm like, take that this time, get out of Glasgow, get out of Scotland, get out of this league, go elsewhere and enjoy yourself. Because if he does, you know, he'd be an asset to any other team, but I just don't think it's going to ever work out at Celtic Hamish. It's almost like Jota or something like that at a lesser level, like not really working for him um, at his kind of boyhood club, then goes away somewhere on loan and, and hits it up. And I mean, we ended up signing Jota, so you could see something similar happening with with Mikey Johnson. I'm trying to think what if he keeps a lot of kind of fee we could look for, but if they get promoted, you know, and they're in with a chance at the moment, they seem to be playing quite well, they'd have a bit of money to splash. So we might end up doing quite well out of it, um, insert your usual joke about the Celtic board not spending money, but yes, um, the Celtic FC Foundation have uh, announced a Legends charity match uh, against uh, Borussia Dortmund, who will feature the likes of Marcel Schmelzer and Roman Weidenfeller. Uh, Celtic Legends will be managed by Paul Lambert, captained by Scott Brown, I think um, Tom Boyd's involved in some way as well, and it's uh, Sunday May the 26th, which I think is the day after the Scottish Cup final, whether we're there or not, we'll have to wait and see um, we've had a few of these over the years, I remember me and you actually going to one, it was kind of Celtic Legends against another Celtic Legends after the, the Invincible final we also had the, the, Scott, the Scott Brown testimonial as well I'm not sure this one will sell quite as well given the kind of feeling towards the the board at the moment but it's a tasty one um what other Dortmund players could we could we see play well, Fumade Fumade Hamish there was Stefan Schapp is that Carol Heinz Riedler I liked him uh, Andy Moeller as well remember Stefan Reuter there was that goalie Stefan Kloss he was brilliant he was good <laughs> oh no wait a minute <laughs> He would get a funny reaction, wouldn't he? I mean, he, a bit of a Dortmund. He won the European Cup with Dortmund, didn't he? And the same team as, as Lambert. So you never know. Um, tickets for the match will be exclusively available to season ticket holders from 10am on Wednesday, March the 13th. That's uh, next Wednesday. Uh, all remaining tickets then being placed on general sale from the following Wednesday. Uh, another team in yellow this weekend. It's Livingston in mm. the Scottish Cup. At Celtic Park, um, yeah. What, what's the what's the thoughts on this one? I've got to be careful what I say here, and I mean that sincerely because, despite the fact that this season's not went to plan and this team really struggle to get a run of consistency, I would be astonished, and I mean that. I would be astonished if we aren't in the semi-final draw after the game. 
Livingston or the pits at their absolute worst. Um, and yeah, I'd be shocked if, no matter what team we put out, that uh, we don't win that fairly comfortably in Sunday, Hamish. Or do you think the same as me? Yeah, I'm always at risk of, of being clipped up and posted on online um, and these kind of things. I, I would say that Livingston have... Um, have really not impressed me this season whenever I've seen them. And that, I think, has only been against us. But that um, that game at, at the Tony Macaroni, a ground that we have tra- traditionally struggled at the, earlier this season when Joe Hart got a red card and we still, with 10 men, absolutely battered them. Like, they literally didn't didn't offer anything in that match, even with a, a, a player more in the pitch. That was, that was such an easy game. I've never seen an easier game when Celtic have been down to 10 men. Um... And the game at Celtic Park, I, I don't remember much about that game. I think it was 2-0, wasn't it? That was kind of our great reset match after the um, after the Hearts, uh, the, the first 2-0 loss to Hearts. We kind of had that game against Livingston. So there's maybe parallels there. Um, but that was another pretty easy game. So, yeah, I think, I think the team should win on Sunday. Of course they should. I mean, it's Livingston at home. It, it's a pretty favourable draw, I would say. And, you know, that would get us through to Hamden and our, our record at Hamden is, is pretty good over the years, um, you know, especially under Brendan Rodgers. He's never lost there, has he? So, yeah, I'm feeling all right about the Scottish Cup. I think after that, if we can find a way to get through this match, um, things would really get interesting in the Cup because you'd probably be looking at, at Rangers and, and Hearts, who are both good sides. And I think Kelly or Aberdeen and, and the other the other team in the same. I mean, we've obviously had, had struggles against Kelly. So could be a battle to win the Cup this year, the way we're playing. But Sunday, we need to take care of it. Um, and it is a Cup game, but it's also a chance, I think, to just build a bit of confidence ahead of, of returning to the league the following week. You saw that Dundee game, that, that one performance, how enthused everyone got. And maybe we got a little bit you know, too enthused given how, how Sunday went against Hearts, but I want the team to get back to that kind of um that kind of performance. You know, there's been a lot of talk since the Hearts game, a lot of stuff has happened. Yang, Rogers, you know, various things said about the team. Um and I just hope that, you know, they're they're firing and ready to go and ready to make a bit of a statement, um, you know, about what's going to happen between now and the end of the season. There's still everything there to be won. Um you know, like it's it's two points in it, and we we saw at the weekend how quickly things can turn. We had you know Saturday night we had certain people saying that the league would be over if we we beat Hearts on Sunday. So it's just um, no, it's just I know, evidence I, of I, know they, 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 I don't know what they were thinking, especially with us this it, season. It'd never be me. It's just but, um, it's just evidence though, in it of how quickly things can turn. Um, you know, with our results and obviously our rivals as well, but just focusing on ourselves, even like Wednesday, the, the boost everyone got from that kind of display against Dundee. We go out on Sunday against Livingston and, and, you know, put in a similar level of performance. Again, people will be enthused. Yeah, um, the only thing I think, Sunday at half two, though, don't know if the crowd will be up for it like they were in midweek against Dundee, especially against Livy. That's another story, though, but the team can only do but it can regardless of the crowd and I expect that we win comfortably. Right. Um, Stevie's been struggling a bit in this video, so we do really appreciate you, you coming on, battling your, your ailments to, to give some wonderful content to the um, the, the wonderful people of, of Celtic AM. I think we'll, we'll make this a, a weekly thing, me and you catching up whenever possible. Anything else you want to get off your chest with regards to, to Celtic right now or, or just life? Just this bloody cough. I want to get that away. I want to get rid of that. But nah, I think it'll be all good for next week. And um, a final shout out to our mutual friend as well, Robert Borthwick, who has for the last three days been making my life absolute hell via WhatsApp. So you don't need to be subjected to that, Hamish. But I do. Um, for everybody that might not know him, he is a very really decent Hearts fans. But regardless, He's been such a pest this week, so that's probably no made that's probably made me worse, Amish, than what um, I was last week. Yeah, um, I thought you were actually going to uh, shout out someone else there, uh, another mutual friend we've got, Paul, who's had some some great news. Um, so I don't know if Paul watches the channel, but huge congratulations to to Paul. Um, yes, uh, I think we'll we'll move on from here. 
and uh, I'll be back tomorrow to, to look ahead to the Livingston game. I'm sure there'll be some more news between now and then as well. Remember to check out GigPod, where Stevie hails from. You don't even need to put up with his face on GigPod because it's a podcast. Um, so that's a, a real reason to, to check out that. Have you got much coming up on, on GigPod? I think they're just going to do a review after that game on Sunday. I don't even know if Reeds will be watching it, so I think we'll have to bluff away into it. <laughs> I was laughing when uh, the recent gig pod when, when Reeds said, nah, I'll probably I'll probably watch Liverpool v Man City instead of Celtic. Scottish got a final at Celtic Park on Sunday. My birthday, fact fans. But I'm uh, giving myself a birthday treat by not going to it. And I don't even know if I'll watch it, I'll tell you the truth, because Liverpool's playing Man City and that's, that'll be a much better game. He, he will genuinely be watching that instead of the game. He really is a disgrace, but He's my disgrace, so I just have to bear with him and put up with him, and I have done for the last eight years. It's been brilliant. I know the feeling well. Right, we're going to head off. Thank you very much, everyone. Speak to you tomorrow.